Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama sci-fi movie called Plan 75. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens in Japan, with a young man entering an elderly home with a camera and a gun. He brutally kills all the residents, and then sits down to commit the unthinkable. Before pulling the trigger, he records a final message on the camera. He states that Japan's aging problem has become increasingly serious and has placed a strain on the country's economy. The burden of this problem has fallen on the younger generation. He hopes that his actions will prompt society to address the issue of senior citizens. With this message, the man pulls the trigger and on a himself. In the aftermath, the incident creates a huge stir throughout the country. The government also finally starts to pay attention to the aging problem. Following several resolutions, they announce the implementation of Plan 75, a policy that grants people over the age of 75 the right to euthanasia. Furthermore, these old people will be given a stipend of 100,000 yen to ensure that their final days are comfortable. That stipend would get me nothing but groceries for about a week in Canada. In the next scene, we're introduced to a 78-year-old woman named Mishi. Despite her age, she still works as a cleaner in a hotel. Her routine involves working, hanging out with her colleagues who are the same age as her, and then returning home alone. It turns out her husband passed away a while ago, and she doesn't have any children. Next, we see a young man named Hiromu who works at Plan 75's office. He meets an elderly woman who has come to ask about the policy. Hiromu informs her that the government has offered them 100,000 yen so that they can live luxuriously and do the things they have always desired. Furthermore, the government will also pay for their cremation expenses and allow them to be buried alongside their loved ones, if they so wish. The elderly woman is pleased to hear this and applies for the plan. Hiromu begins her application with a smile, but deep inside, he doesn't feel good about his work. Afterward, we meet a Filipino woman named Maria, who works at an elderly care home in Japan. She has a daughter back in the Philippines who has heart disease and requires immediate surgery, but Maria is struggling to gather the money, and she cries in frustration. The scene then cuts to Mishi and her friends hanging out at karaoke over the weekend. One of the women informs them about the Platinum Plan 75 package, which includes stays in luxury hotels, spa treatments, photo studios, and other entertainment options. She mentions that they will all die sooner or later, and that this is a lovely way to go. They're going to rub my shoulders before they kill me. The woman also claims that it's something to think about for the future of her grandchildren. After karaoke, Mishi she goes to stay overnight at her friend Inko's place. As they prepare to sleep, Inko reveals that her daughter hasn't contacted her in several years. She claims that despite having children and grandchildren, she feels very lonely. Mishi responds that everyone feels lonely in this world and consoles her. The two women then hold hands and fall asleep. Elsewhere, we see Maria singing at a church with other believers. During lunch, she stands up and shows a photo of her daughter. She then explains that her child has congenital heart disease and requires immediate surgery. Maria asks for help, and thankfully, some kind people agree to collect donations for her. Later, a woman approaches Maria and informs her of a job, opening at the Plan 75 office. The salary is significant significantly higher than her current position, though the specifics of the role are unclear. Desperate for money, Maria agrees to take the job, regardless of the details. Meanwhile, Hiromu greets another old man who has come to apply for Plan 75. However, he is surprised to discover that the old man is none other than his own uncle. Hiromu then introduces himself, but the old man is too stunned to say anything. Later, Hiromu talks to his manager about meeting his uncle as an applicant. He reveals that they met after 20 years and his uncle didn't even attend his father's funeral. The manager says it will be difficult for him to handle this case and suggests he delegate it to a co-worker, to which Hiromu agrees. In another scene, Mishi and her friends are dismissed because the hotel does not want elderly employees to die on the job. While they pack their belongings, she asks her friends where they will go next, and they all say that they will stay with their children or grandchildren. Mishi is slightly upset to hear this, as she has no relatives or children. She also discovers that her building has been issued a demolition notice, making her situation even worse. Following this, the old woman spends her entire day looking for a new job, but no one is willing to hire her. She calls Inko several times throughout the day, but even her best friend doesn't answer. The next morning, Mishi arrives at Inko's house to meet her, only to discover her lifeless body on the floor. This leaves her distraught, as her only close friend has passed away. Meanwhile, Hiromu has been feeling restless since meeting his uncle, so he decides to go to his uncle's house 
house and spend some time together. They talk about their lives, and Hiromu discovers a blood donation record book on the table. His uncle reveals that he worked as a construction worker in various cities across the country, and he donated blood whenever he visited a new place. When his uncle inquires about his parents, Hiromu reveals that his father died, and his mother remarried. So don't get any ideas, uncle, you deadbeat. After dinner, he helps wash the dishes while his uncle sits in front of the TV. They hear about Japan's economic growth. Since the implementation of Plan 75, it turns out that the government intends to lower the eligibility age to 65 soon. The next day, Mishi arrives at the social welfare office to seek help, only to find it closed. She then sits on a nearby bench where several people are handing out food to the homeless. Moments later, Hiromu approaches her and hands her a bowl of soup, which deeply saddens Mishi. She decides decides that she cannot take this miserable life any longer, and calls the Plan 75 hotline. She could handle looking old, but looking homeless, case closed. An operator named Yoko then warmly greets her and begins her application process. She also assures Mishi that they will be in regular contact from now on. Elsewhere, we see Maria working at the Plan 75 facility. It turns out her job involves arranging the belongings of deceased people who have no family and preparing them for cremation. While she's working, her co-worker hands her a coffee watch that belonged to a deceased person. Maria tries to refuse it, but the man insists that the dead are gone, and these items will be discarded anyway. Hearing this, Maria thinks of her daughter and reluctantly accepts the watch. Over the next few days, Yoko and Mishi continue to talk, and the latter mentions that it's been a long time since he's had such conversations. She opens up about her life and reveals that she had an arranged marriage. Mishi once gave birth to a baby, who tragically died as a result of the umbilical cord being wrapped around his neck. Shortly after, their session time runs out, so Mishi seizes the chance to ask Yoko to meet. In the next scene, we see the two women finally meeting in person. Yoko reveals that it's not allowed for them to meet applicants like this, and requests Mishi not to tell anyone. She explains that the company fears employees might get attached and develop emotional bonds. Mishi then hands her some money for spending time with her. Yoko refuses, but the old woman explains that she received 100,000 yen, but has nowhere else to use it. After some hesitation, Yoko accepts accepts the money, and they spend the evening chatting and bowling together. It's fun now, but Yoko's ass is about to get fired for this, for sure. Elsewhere, Hiromu is putting flyers out for the Plan 75 initiative, but this angers some people and they start throwing trash at him. Hiromu then returns to his office, where he discovers that the ashes of cremated individuals without families are discarded as industrial waste. This deeply upsets him, and makes him question if he's making a mistake by being part of such a program. The scene then cuts to Mishi, who is happily chatting with Yoko about her recent trip and the fancy sushi she tried, but the latter appears to be sad throughout the conversation. When asked what's bothering her, Yoko reveals that this is their final call. She reminds Mishi that she will die tomorrow and asks her to leave her door unlocked so that the staff can clean out her home. With a soft voice, Yoko states that she can back out at any time if she wishes. However, Mishi appears to have made up her mind and thanks her for chatting with her. After the call, Yoko feels restless as she does doesn't want the old woman to die. She calls Mishi from her personal number, but the latter has already disconnected her phone. The next morning, Mishi wakes up early and clears out her apartment. She watches the sunrise from her balcony one last time, preparing to say goodbye to the world. Soon after, she leaves the house and watches children playing in the park. Mishi then boards a bus and proceeds to the Plan 75 facility to end her life. On the other hand, Hiromu arrives at his uncle's house, who is also scheduled to die today. They eat lunch together and silence at a restaurant. When Hiromu returns after washing his hands, he sees his uncle holding a wine glass in a motionless state. It's almost as if he has lost his soul. They then proceed to the facility, but the uncle abruptly begins to vomit. Hiromu asks if he wants to return home, but the old man refuses. Shortly after, they arrive at the facility, where Hiromu drops off his uncle and proceeds to leave. Mishi is already in bed and going through some tests. Shortly after, she locks eyes with Hiromu's uncle in the bed next to her and notices his life leaving his body. This terrifies Mishi so badly that she realizes she wants to live. On the other hand, Hiromu is heading home when he feels uneasy thinking about his uncle. He suddenly has a change of heart and returns to the facility to see him. However, by the time he arrives, he finds that his uncle has already passed away. Meanwhile, Mishi is sitting up in her bed, having decided not to end her life. Following this, Hiromu recalls how the cremated ashes of people without family members are discarded like garbage. He decides he can't let that happen to his uncle, and decides to give him a dignified farewell. Moments later, Maria arrives
arrives and discovers Hiromu attempting to steal his uncle's body. Instead of stopping him, she understands his situation and assists him in loading the body into the car. Hiromu then drives away and attempts to book a cremation service. He's informed that the only available slot is four days later, which frustrates him. But then, he discovers that there is an available slot in an hour, and he must hurry to make it. Hiromu promptly confirms the reservation and drives away as quickly as he can. However, he is soon stopped by a police officer due to his excessive speed. When asked about the old man, Hiromu explains that it is his uncle. The officer doesn't suspect much and assumes that the old man must be sleeping. Back at the facility, Maria is cleaning up a dead person's belongings when she accidentally discovers a small bag containing cash. This makes her very emotional because it means she can finally afford her daughter's surgery. On the other hand, Mishi sneaks out of the facility and heads to a nearby hill. She then watches the sun set and sings the same song she did at karaoke with her friends. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.